Some plants are born criminals. For example, the young Dada comes out of the seed case all ready for a life of crime. It has no intention of earning a respectable living, so it doesn't trouble to grow roots, but makes do with a tuft of suckers. With this, it grips a piece of earth, levering itself out into the air. Instead of an innocent young plant, a creature, like a serpent, appears and immediately feels about for a victim. But this particular kind preys only on the flax plant. Its appearance is timed for the moment when the young flax is just above the ground. Choosing a victim, the dodder lays hold on it, securing it with the wonderful coiled grip of the master criminal. If you uncoil the spiral loop, you will see a number of suckers on the inner side. Here is one under the microscope. Each sucker gets a hold on the stem of the flex, as you see in this cross section, and then it pushes fibers down into the flex, drawing food and strength from the victim's lifeblood. You can imagine that the drain on the vitality of the flex is very heavy. For example, here are half a dozen plants, all of the same age. The short one was attacked by the dada very early, and this one a little later. You can see how underdeveloped they are. After the strangler has got a grip of stinging nettles, feared by men and animals, are without defense against the evildoers and are soon entangled beyond hope. The Dada is a very quick moving plant and although we have hurried up its action a little in the film, you will get some idea of the rate at which it really moves by comparing it with a clock. Watch the hand especially the second hand. Naturally, to so swift an attacker, the slow-moving, full-grown, full-fed, the dodder puts out small globes along the stem, and these develop into little bunches of flowers. The flower is the only thing about the dodder which ever shows even a suggestion of simple beauty. There are about 50 different types of dada, as well as the one that preys on flex. But the all dadas are born stranglers on the unlucky victim. It loses all interest in the earth, and the part below the original double coil withers away. Meanwhile, the part above the coil grows upwards and will insert fresh fibers at each spiral curve. The criminal is cunning enough to realize it would be fatal to destroy the unwilling host, so it cleverly avoids doing harm to the leaves, which manufacture food for the flex, and thus, indirectly, feed the dodder.
However closely the leaves may grow, the vampire still manages to dodge them. Even more cunning is the way in which the dodder chooses a new victim when it has outgrown the first. Instead of getting a stranglehold on the next young flex, it comes along to the third or fourth, thus leaving a series of spare parts ready for the young offshoots it will produce later. And here are the young shoots, profiting by the parental care. There's honor among fields, and if two daughters meet, they don't even consider strangling one another. but take a friendly hold and part. These other dodders will attack any kind of plant. Though the hairy stem of a puppy rather puts the strangler off his stroke, he manages to get his vampire grip all the same. Esther falls an easy victim. But the convolvulus is almost as agile as the dodder and does its best to elude the strangler's clutches. A desperate chase takes place before it is finally overwhelmed. Master criminals are very frequently portrayed on the screen and the more wicked they are, the more popular they seem. But probably the film world has never seen such an out-and-out evildoer, such a super strangler as the Dodder.